Today, we're going to combine an ESP8266 microcontroller with a directional Wi-Fi antenna. But to do so, we're going to need to do a little bit of surface mount soldering on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Microcontrollers like the ESP8266 have Wi-Fi built in, and that's really cool. But what's even more cool is that there are certain models of the D1 Mini that also have a port where you can connect a directional antenna. Now this can give you exceptional range, but if I were to just plug this in after opening the package, it simply wouldn't work. And the reason for this was recently covered in a Hack5 video by Glitch. Now there's a tiny little zero ohm resistor here that's connecting the built-in antenna to the chip. And in order for us to free this up to be able to use a directional antenna, we're going to need to have to change this tiny, tiny little resistor over to a different pad that connects it to the breakout adapter. Now to do this, we're going to need a couple things. One, I recommend a station to be able to hold onto this so you don't burn yourself in the process. Two, a pair of tweezers so you can move the part necessary just a little bit and three, some sort of hot air gun in order to heat up the solder so that we can make sure to move it without burning the board. Now, you can try to do this with a really, really tiny tweezers uh, and then a soldering iron, but it is really difficult because it tends to get stuck to the soldering iron. So I recommend a hot air gun, although as you're about to see, it is a little bit difficult. Now, once you have these components together and an ESP8266 based D1 mini board that has a breakout adapter, then we should be ready to go. And if you need to take a look at this stuff, you should be able to find it on the Null Byte article linked in the description, plus some troubleshooting hints in case you get stuck. Once you have all this together, we can get started. Looking at the D1 mini, we can see the problem right here. Now to the right side, you can see that there is a little pad and there's nothing really soldered to this. Now, this pad leads directly to the antenna that we want to plug in and access. And unfortunately, because there's no path back to the microcontroller, that means that this is totally cut off. And if we were to plug something into it, then frankly, nothing would happen. And this would be pretty frustrating if we just plugged in our directional antenna and noticed that there was no signal gain whatsoever. Now, instead, what we'll need to do is find a way to take this little resistor here and move it over so it makes contact between these two points. Now this is pretty tedious and it can get pretty dicey if you're using the hot air gun because this is so small that it can actually blow away. So keep in mind that if you don't have one that's adjustable, you're gonna to wanna to be careful about that. Now essentially what we're gonna be doing is using some tweezers to grip onto this. And after we heat it up, uh, holding this in place, we're going to try to pick it up and then move it over so that instead it's right here on this joint, right there. So that is not a totally easy task, but of the various ways we have to do this, we can either try soldering with a very small point or we can try this. So I've successfully done this already a couple times today. So I'm gonna show you exactly what it looks like to try to solder this over and we might get this on our first try, we might not, but either way, we will get a directional antenna working with this ESP8266. To get started, we're going to need to melt the solder with a little bit of heat. And for that, we're going to use a heat gun. Now, the one I have is relatively cheap, and it also allows me to adjust both the temperature and the airflow. So to start, we can see there's a knob here that I can move back and forth to adjust the amount of air that flows through, as well as a up and down knob in order to adjust the temperature, which I can run anywhere from around 315 degrees Celsius all the way up to about 400 degrees, which is about 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, this is kind of like a soldering iron, so you can kind of think of this as a heat reservoir, and you want to, like a soldering iron, only apply the necessary heat. So when we turn this on, you can adjust the temperature here by pressing these buttons. And I'm gonna put it at, let's say 290, or maybe let's say three, something like that. And then when I pick up the tip, it should automatically start, and I'll be able to use the hot air to start melting solder. Next, take your board and place it in a pair of helping hands or a rework station. I got this one off Amazon, and again, it's pretty cheap, but it does the job of holding onto the board while I'm working on it. And this is a great way to make sure that you are able to see everything that you need to do. And if you can't see this all with a actual magnifying glass, then you can take the next step and pick up a cheap little microscope as well. 
Now to pull this off, we're going to use a hot air gun to heat up the board and get everything a little bit warmer before applying a gentle amount of heat exactly to the part that we need to move. And then taking these tweezers and this microscope we have here in order to attempt to very, very carefully remove the component and move it slightly to the side. Now the microscope here is basically seen as a webcam by the camera, so you should be able to follow along and see what we're doing, even though this is incredibly small. So let's give it a go, and what we're going to try to do is move the resistor over just a little bit so that we can get access to this awesome external antenna port. Now what we're going to need to do is take this heat gun, and when it's heated to the appropriate temperature, we're going to heat up the board just a bit while watching on the microscope to make sure that everything is still okay and we're not initially just liquefying it and then burning the crap out of it beyond what we need to. Remember, treat this like a soldering iron, so make sure that you're not applying unnecessary heat and point it only at the components that you need to melt. I'm using the microscope here to just occasionally glance and make sure that when it looks like the solder is molten, as I just saw it go right there, then I'm moving the components before I burn the board. So a little bit of back and forth heat initially, and then some very specific closer up heat in order to move the component is basically what you'll need to do. And a second hand to hold a pair of tweezers is the way that we'll actually move the component. All right, now the technique we're gonna do today is basically attempting to use a bit of hot air to heat this up until uh, it's ready to release the component. We're gonna take it off of the board and then we're going to attempt to remount it. Now the way we remount it is by heating up the solder again and placing the component while holding it in place with a pair of tweezers. And this is pretty delicate work. I'm gonna blow some hot air and I want you to pay attention to when the solder actually becomes liquid because that's the point at which we will be able to move the component. Now, first I will heat up the board a little bit in general and then you'll notice that the flux will start to go a bit and then if I'm accurate with the heat gun, you can see right there, the solder just melted. Now, if I get in quickly with a pair of tweezers, I should be able to pick this up and move it. So let's see if I can pick this component off the board without too many problems right off the bat. So I'm gonna go ahead and grip it, see that it's still on, start applying some heat. There we go. All right, now we have a smoking hot, tiny, 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 tiny component, wonderful. Now, one thing that is really easy to do, and I know I've said this a couple times, but I want to reiterate it, is it's really, really easy to accidentally set this thing flying. So make sure that if you're going to do this, you have a good pair of tweezers and you have a steady place to put your hands because losing this is very annoying and I've done it many times. Now here, what we'll need to do is look for the new home this needs to go to, which is this place right here and I need to be very careful. You can see I need to place this on the board basically to connect this new connection here to the breakout antenna. All right, now we've moved this around a little bit just so it's more level. And what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that this trace right here is now connected with the microcontroller. So that means connecting these two things right here with the uh, little tiny, tiny, tiny resistor that we had. So let's go ahead and place that. All right. We more or less have it in the right place. So if it can gently blow hot air here, we should be able to allow this to just melt back into where it needs to go. All right, as you can see, we're melting the solder, really giving it to these components. And now if we haven't burned the board, this should be enough to allow us to use it. So again, this is not the most beautiful job, but I'm gonna go ahead let this dry a little bit and we should be able to now test it and see if we got a successful job. And another good indication is if I'm able to move this with a tweezers, then we will need to redo this. So I'm gonna blow on it and then attempt to move this. And if it's soldered in place, then we should be good if I didn't fry this board. Hey, it looks pretty good to me. All right, let's go ahead and test this board and see if I broke it. With everything completed, we can attach the external cable and then select a directional antenna to install. In this case, I'm gonna plug it into a panel antenna by Alpha Networks. And once I plug this in, then I should be able to test this design by plugging it into a micro USB cable. And then after plugging it into a power supply, creating a hotspot and 
using a computer in the other side of the room to detect whether or not I get a signal spike when I move it back and forth to try to create a jump in the signal. Now, if this is an omnidirectional still, then nothing will happen and we'll see the same signal the entire time. But if this is now a directional antenna, then we should see a big jump when we point it directly at the laptop that's receiving. So let's see if we've actually managed to make a directional antenna here. Now to test this out, I'm going to be attaching it to a directional antenna and sweeping it back and forth. Now what we're looking for in Wireshark is a sudden jump in signal as soon as we point the directional antenna at the source. And while I'm plotting the signal strength here, that is exactly what we see, meaning that we've succeeded in soldering on the directional antenna. The ability to take a D1 Mini and add a directional Wi-Fi antenna can give your project an exceptional range. And if you were to make this modification to two separate ESP8266s and just have them maybe a couple miles apart, you would probably be able to get your devices to connect far beyond the traditional range you would expect for this little IoT board. Now keep in mind that while doing this, it's really easy to accidentally blow away this little zero ohm resistor. So if you're using a hot air station that's not adjustable, make sure that you're doing this very carefully and heating the board up slowly if necessary, because it is really annoying to have this thing go flying if uh, you accidentally blow it off the board and it goes somewhere that you can't find because it is incredibly small. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you need any of this stuff, or if you get stuck, you can always check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. If you have any ideas for future episodes, you can hit me up on Twitter at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.